honestly, I cannot <laughs> recommend this enough. And I'm not even kidding. I'm not, in my unbiased opinion, I have to say that food and agribusiness, I love it. <laughs> G'day, it's Rob from Life That Travels. I'm here with April. We're in the Hello. KPMG building. This is kind of yes, cool. Yes, I know. It's fantastic. Very schmicko. It is. <laughs> Tell me about being dropped in a small village in Laos. Being dropped off. <laughs> yeah. So my first of my two <laughs> research projects that I went, um, I went to in Laos, I had the amazing opportunity to go with my university professor. And he um, drove us an hour and a half from the main city of Kamwan province, Nakai. And it was 12 p.m. Uh, 12 a.m. at night, and he essentially said, "Okay, you're here. We'll pick you up in a few days." And at that point, we had only stayed in Laos for maybe a week. We could only <laughs> say hello and goodbye and thank you, and we were not gonna lie, pretty scared, pretty nervous about how to actually cope in such an environment where you don't know the culture, you don't know the language, you don't know the social cues. So that was really interesting, but it is honestly what sparked my love for international agricultural research. Yeah. So before we get on to international agricultural yes. research, um, what happened? So uh, after three to four days, my professor finally picked us up and honestly, I was shocked. My friend who's a vegetarian, essentially because of the language barrier, she had to eat fish soup, which is just blended up fish with water. Right. So not like the nice creamy pumpkin soup, mushroom soup you're used to here in Sydney or Australia. Um, very culturally eye-opening, nothing like you've seen before, dirt roads, uh, a lack of education unfortunately, and of very low socioeconomic status, so it was very eye-opening on all accounts. Yeah, wow. Yes. So tell me a bit about international ag, Yes. and what got you into it to begin with? Yes, so the new Colombo plan has honestly been incredibly enabling for me. Um, through it, I was able to study and research palm oil production. So for my project, mm. I looked into social um, issues associated with the work conditions of uh, employees that work on the plantations of palm oil um, plants. And that really ignited in my mind, well, if this is happening in Indonesia, what's happening in other regions of the Indo-Pacific. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, it was really interesting to be able to delve into um, international agricultural research because so much needs to be developed. Uh, it kind of hurts my heart when I hear people, when I hear that farmers are the ones that are producing most of our foods, but they're the ones that are most food insecure and they're the ones of the, hmm. of the poorest, uh, one of the poorest groups of the developing world. So, Isn't yeah. that, I mean, because um, palm oil is in like literally everything. Yeah. And, and yeah, there is such exploitation across um, the Asia pack yes. um, to produce this stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's fascinating that you kind of ended up in there. Yes. What's, what's, like, tell me about international um, agriculture anyway. Like, mm. how did you end up studying this discipline? How did you yeah. choose that to, in terms of going to uni? Yeah, so um, I honestly had not even thought of food and agribusiness as a potential career opportunity for me. Um, I really as most of us do, enjoy eating and uh, nice. found food production a vital part of that. Without food production, without farmers, I wouldn't be able to eat and neither would any of us really. So I really wanted to investigate how that impacts me. And I looked at all these degrees, but some were too sciencey, some were too um, nutrition based. Um, and this degree uh, that was that's offered at the University of Sydney, the Food, of, um, food and Agribusiness degree, um, really encompassed all facets of agricultural science, agriculture Agricultural economics, agricultural business, and production. So yeah. And what do you guys like? So what's what does a usual week for an agri business student look like? Lectures, prax. What what kind of what goes yep. into it? So in your first year, you're definitely looking at a lot of um, science because they're building the foundation of chemistry and biology to be able to equip you with agricultural production on a basic level of um, looking at plants and animals and such. Um, as you go progress throughout the degree, you're looking at more specific uh, units that are more tailored to food production in general. Cool. So okay. you're actually even looking at ways to develop food products. Cool. And in um, my degree, you have your last year's an honours year. So I'm mm. actually um, looking at actualities and expectations that farmers 
have in terms of their attitudes towards trading cattle and buffalo in Laos. So yeah, that's. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. sorry, but like, wow. I know, that's... it's a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome though. Like yeah. how, how cool that like you've gone into this degree that you're really passionate about mm -hmm. and suddenly it's like led you out into these really cool places that a lot of people don't get to see. That's super 100%. unique. Yeah. Um, not going to lie, even before I had even done my degree, I didn't even know what Lao was. I didn't even know what palm oil was. I didn't know anything about agricultural production and I didn't realise what a vital part it plays in our economy. In Lao itself, agriculture plays, agricultural um, activity accounts for 80% of the GDP. Mm. So imagine if that progresses, how much more economic and economically stable can the whole country be? It's insane. Yeah. Yes. And so what's next for you? Um, you're finishing your research or yes. you, you finished? I'm going to finish in November. So I'd like to continue pursuing a, a career in international agricultural research. Awesome. Um, might potentially do my PhD. Um, I definitely have to see just the opportunities that are available in terms of um, PhD funding and such. But um, New Colombo Plan has definitely opened that door for me. And I really would love to pursue that um, in that field in the and region. industry, yeah, for nice. sure. Nice. And what, so, um, international ag, food science sort of stuff at UCID, um, yes. what was it like or what has it been like studying there? It's a good degree program? Honestly, I cannot <laughs> recommend this enough and I'm not even kidding, I'm not. In my unbiased opinion, I have to say that food and agribusiness, I love it. I've n I, I go see my friends who do commerce degrees, economics degrees, and they're like, ugh, I have to go to uni. But whenever I go to uni, I'm literally like, I'm so excited. I get to learn what I love. I get to meet the best people, nice. see the best academics, the best of the best. And um, you just learn so much. And you're actually using and learning things that are practical and can be applied in the real world. And are not just theories and theorems that you'll never hear again, but you're actually going to apply them in the real world, so yeah. yeah. It's so awesome, it's like it's so shining good. out of you like this enthusiasm, <laughs> which is crazy, right? I know, it's almost embarrassing. How did you How did you find that though? I mean, was it watching MasterChef before, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. don't know, like. I honestly. Like I stumbled into my science degree, right? <laughs> my brother, my brother, brother went to the, the uni I went to before I did, yeah. and I was like, oh, I'm passionate about the environment, I like the environment, I'm gonna go do that. But I didn't really have any yeah. idea. Yeah. And it was great, because I stumbled my way through mm. uni and found what I love, but what about for you? I think when I went to Indonesia initially, I actually also went to the ACR office, which is the Australian Centre for International and Agricultural Research. And I got to see firsthand the projects that they are funding and just seeing how more, much more equipped these farmers were to be able to produce food, to be able to provide their, for their families, to be able to become more financially stable, to um, even be productive in their local local communities. That was so incredibly rewarding to me. And if I can see that happening in Indonesia, I want to see that happening in the least developing countries in the world, such as Laos. Nice. Yes. Um, last question. It's yes. <laughs> um, a time of filming. This is like the month before HSC starts for yeah. students. If you could teleport yourself back in time um, <laughs> yeah. and give yourself some advice. Yeah before going into, complete non sequitur question, um, <laughs> give yourself some advice yeah. before going into that end of school exams, what would you yeah. tell yourself? When I was in HSC, I was studying like nine to 10 hours a day because I thought it was the be all and end all. And what I can say to you now, the HSC is important, but what you need to do is just try your best. Don't put an overwhelming amount of pressure on yourself because at the end of the day, you're just hurting yourself because you're trying to, compare yourself to other people just do the best you can possibly do and that's all you can do that's the that's also the advice my mum has given to me and it's been tested through and through and it works and yeah I just would encourage that to all HSE students entering their um, exams. April yes. so good chatting with you. Thank yes you likewise time. thank you so much. See ya. Bye.